Moving along to the Disneyland Resort and some of the news updates on the Disneyland Inn. Uh, it does turn out that Disneyland has once again canceled reservations going into uh, October this time through October the 17th. If you're somebody who was staying at a Disney Resort hotel uh, during this time or you had plans to stay up and through October 17th, that is now officially canceled. I don't think that's a surprise. Certainly um, week to week we cover this as information comes out and as uh, the stories sort of are created uh, in that capacity and and, and we're notified, but uh, more reservations have been canceled. At this point, um, I said this with uh, Sabina uh, the last time that we covered this and how it was uh, uh, canceled through, I think it was October the 3rd or October the 10th or something like that. Um, at this point, maybe don't plan until yeah. you hear Disneyland's reopening. Yeah, how about <laughs> shut down the reservation system for at the time being and then open it back up again yeah. when you kind of figure out like you're going to open up in a month or so, you know? Yeah. It just seems like really silly that, I mean, again, they want the money. They mm -hmm. want to give you the option. Hey, do you want to extend your vacation in two more weeks? Right. You know, to keep that money in there. But I don't know. At least these people have jobs right now. So that's I know, my that's thing. Like, there's that. Yeah. There's that part. So it's just so silly. Like, just it's just like tugs at your heartstrings. You're like, oh, man, again, this yeah. is like going it's, out. It's more so the getting your hopes up. Yeah. yeah like, like you're uh, like, oh, tough. man, I haven't gotten that notification yet. It's canceled. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. No, got it. It's, uh. Yeah, they just need to like either stop it and just say like, hey, you guys, we're not doing reservations for like the next month. And then maybe you can start planning in December. Like, how about just like putting it out there for like a little bit further out the road, not right now in like the next three weeks. I mean, uh, we don't know what their negotiations are like, and it sounds like they're actually not being very talkative to one another, like with the government, I mean, but like... Um, they could just think like, oh, well, we could open any day now in the back of their heads. So that's what I was thinking. It seems yeah. very optimistic that you know they're having to do this every couple of weeks because it seems like they just sort of expect that it's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely holding on. Yeah, maybe there's hope. Uh, we'll see. But yeah. they're October 17th uh, now canceled. So if you are somebody that uh, had a Disneyland Resort hotel reservation booked uh, through that time frame, just be advised uh, that ain't happening <laughs> at this point. Uh, so you might have to rebook or reconsider. Uh, in other Disney news, it turns out Downtown Disney uh, over at Disneyland is now seeing the type of security screening process that we have been seeing in Walt Disney World. Thank goodness this is finally arriving. We were talking about this when we first saw it arrive in Walt Disney World, and that is the contactless security screening system where uh, you can enter through basically um, non-touch points. You aren't having anything looked at in terms of bags. You, know, you aren't going through that typical security check that you are used to at a Disney Disney Park. Now you just walk past a certain amount of towers and off you go. Uh, there's very little in terms of um, any sort of touch that needs to happen unless there's something that goes off uh, and there's a signal that maybe uh, there's something that's in your bag that should not be coming in. Uh, nine times out of ten, it's something that you know, is, is rectified like an umbrella, you know, it's not something mm. that's necessarily all that concerning. Um, but you see a video, if you're watching us uh, playing now, that sort of gives you an indication as to uh, just how simple this process is and how it allows people to move right through. No stopping, no hesitation, no pauses. Um, I have to say, when I was out in Walt Disney World, the majority of places, majority of public places uh, in and around theme parks have this, including uh, some spots in Disney Springs. This is something that is so nice to have because, again, you don't have have to wait you just flow on through and in a time right now where social distancing is everything people are concerned about that six foot rule um, it is nice to not have to worry about coming to a screeching halt at a security tent and everybody being under one tent together and trying their best to get things figured out because those security screenings take a lot of time based oh, yeah. on where you're at like Florida was like like I would always just make sure I don't have a bag at all when we go to Florida because <laughs> I don't want to wait in the heat in the line for like 20 minutes while people have like a bagception going on and pulling out bags on bags <laughs> on bags and I'm like oh my gosh like can we just go like all I have is this like little wristlet or my favorite maneuver was when you would be on one side oh. of the desk and the other people were on the other side and then it would be that person's turn. They'd be like, oh, can you check all my other, this is all my family. Can you check their bags too? And then you're like, oh, all of a sudden you're like five people behind where you thought you were. Uh, that's always, that was always my best, my yeah. favorite part. So I'm, I'm so really glad. excited for this. Yeah. I'm so happy for this. Like with Downtown Disney, I when we went during quarantine, like when uh, Downtown Disney opened and we, were, we decided to try out Tortilla Joe's I, you know, they had this like huge plexiglass thing with this like little hole 
where like the guard would stand on the other side and you'd have to shove your bag <laughs> underneath and then they would grab your bag and I was like, what's the point of the plexiglass? And then they would just like look through my bag and then shove it back. And I'm like, oh my God, like uh, <laughs> you're gonna like rip my leather bag. And and again, like I have a Disney Dooney and Brooke bag and I love it to death. And yeah, it's a little big and everybody knows how expensive Dooney and Brooke bags are. And I'm like, are, you're gonna sh just psh, psh, shove it through that little hole. Security's more important. And I was like, ah, oh! <laughs> so I'm so glad this is happening because I I, I feel like, it was needed, but yep. I still feel bad for these like security guards that sure. now ha are replaced with electronic device. Yeah. But uh, I'm happy that we don't have to like wait in a long line, and and I hope it works. Um, I bet when you went through, you felt like a little weird doing it. You're just like, wait, where is why? Is, yeah. What's happening? I, I feel like the first time I go through, I'm gonna be like, am I doing it right? What? I'm gonna, like, walk really slow. <laughs> That's how I did through. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I was staring at the security people the whole time, like. <laughs> Are you gonna <laughs> yell at me for something? Like, do I? Yeah. Is this correct? And they're like, yeah. "Come on, hurry up! Yeah. What are you doing?" It's like yeah. me walking through like the security, you know, like the metal detector uh, in the airport, and then I like slowly just walk through, looking at the guard or the TSA, <laughs> being like, "Am I okay?" Yeah, I'm right. Like, yeah. I'm okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> Making them more suspicious of you right, every moment. Like, yeah. yeah. Should Should it go off? What is she doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's up to something. So I'm glad this is happening. It's Yay. nice to finally see it. Yeah. 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 And uh, let's make sure that they get installed at all the checkpoints uh, yeah. in and around. Disneyland so that uh, nobody has to wait anymore. You can just flow on through. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it might not be as, you know, normal for a little bit, but like, think of those lines from Harbor in the morning, like yeah. how yeah. long they would get, like mm. all the way back to the front of Disneyland, like where the Disneyland property started. I mean, oh my gosh, uh, Tyler, it took me 40 minutes to get to you one morning. Yeah. yeah. You know, just through that security tent on Harbor side. Um, and, and, and I thought I'd have plenty of time. You know, and uh, nope, not at all. Yeah. You know, it took forever because every single nook and cranny needed to be looked at in terms of bags. Yeah. And yeah, what a mess. We we would sometimes stay at the residence in Marriott, which is right by the convention center. And in, and the closest entrance was that harbor entrance. Mm -hmm. And we would walk all the way around to go to downtown Disney and then walk through downtown Disney to get into the parks. Wow. Because we it's knew nice it would take walk. less time than it would to go through the harbor line. So thank, thank goodness this is happening. Yeah, it's about darn time. That's for sure. In other news, Bob Iger, the executive chairman of the Walt Disney Company, uh, has resigned from the California Governor's Recovery Task Force uh, just days after Disney announced the 28,000 cast member layoff process. Uh, this is something that we've been talking about for a number of months, especially as there seems to have been so much uh, confusion in terms of the governor reissuing guidelines, or I should say issuing guidelines for the first time of reopening uh, for Disneyland. And our question every week as we continued to hear that there was uh, about to be an announcement and then there wouldn't be an announcement was, wait a minute, isn't Bob Iger on this economic reopening task force with the governor's office? Why, like, how is there any miscommunication? How is there any misunderstanding as to what's going on here? And now we see Bob Iger resign the task force. Um, this seems like a big political move, especially given the fact that the announcement still has not come in terms of guidelines. And then we, we hear then just following this resignation that Disneyland and other theme parks are not happy with the guidelines that I guess have been sort of a first draft, if you will, uh, that have been presented to uh, the governor's office by, I should say, by the governor's office to the theme parks. In a statement, the California Attractions and Parks Association, uh, which represents Disneyland, Universal, and other theme park operations in the state, have asked Newsom uh, to not finalize guidance and uh, make sure that they have more of a, uh, I guess, consultation, uh, more of an ability to weigh in. Uh, they say in a statement, we asked the governor not to finalize guidance for amusement parks before engaging the industry in a more earnest manner. Listening to park operators' expertise and collaborating with the industry on a plan that will allow for amusement parks to reopen responsibly while still keeping the health and safety for park employees and guests as a top priority. Today, California amusement park leaders who have been working for months to prepare to reopen responsibly saw an initial draft of state guidelines and blueprint placement for California amusement parks. While we are aligned on many of the protocols and health and safety requirements, there are many others that need to be modified if they are to lead to a responsible and reasonable amusement park reopening plan. So this takes me back to the idea of what was going on for since July, where we were told time and time again that dynamic conversations, that's the governor's words, 
dynamic conversations were happening the whole time. Were they even being talked to? I mean, you know, how is this so late in the game? It's the 11th hour here. Now 28,000 people are out of work because this game kept getting played and nobody was talking to each other. There was no communication. Bob Iger's resigning from this board now. What the heck's going on? I feel like I was, I'm so speechless. <laughs> <laughs> like what was going what was going on? Like I get that there was a lot of other issues with like the fires in California and like the governor had to kind of like, you know, take care of that and whatnot. But still, you have teams, right? I mean, you have people delegate, around you that yeah. For the love of God, I just I, what what is happening? And was like Iger so pissed off that he just was like, you know what? Peace. Yeah, I'm I think out. that's what it was. I mean, I think obviously he wasn't being talked to as much as he felt like he should have, and he probably just kind of thought this is wasting to, yeah. my time. Like I don't know, yeah, or being listened to, I guess. Like, and he just kind of figured, well, this is uh, not dynamic, uh, <laughs> and he decided to to get his butt out of there. Um, it seems like really strange to me, and uh, you know, I I don't know what to make of it. Honestly, it, I'm with you, Wade. It's just a really confusing thing because uh, obviously. It, it seems like somebody was kind of bending the truth here and it might have been Newsom of like saying like, oh yeah, this is what we're doing. Like when honestly I feel like the theme parks for him are on such a back burner right now, but he needs to realize, and I know that, you know, if you're not close to it, I don't think you get it all the time, but there's so many people in Southern California who like going to Disney is like their happy time, their yeah. thing they do. And it is, it has got to be a pretty massive percentage, honestly. Um, so when you talk about, wanting to reopen the economy or whatever, this would be a huge boost for it. And so I don't get what his plan is anymore. I, you know, I'm, I'm just as confused as, as everybody else. Yeah, it's, it's, it feels silly, um, you know, and, and now hearing that the, the theme park, basically the, the theme park coalition here um, is also quite flustered over the idea that this sort of, it sounds like hastily put together reopening guideline. You know, it makes me think like, okay, so, since July, when apparently all these <laughs> guidelines were going to be issued, really nothing's been worked on. Really nothing's yeah. been talked about. Really nothing has been discussed. And time after time during these press conferences, when the governor gets pushed on it, uh, when are we going to hear? He would always tell them, oh, we're so close. Oh, it's just about to happen. These dynamic conversations are happening right now. Who were you talking to? Himself in the mirror. I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just, I, I, I find know. it so mind boggling, you know, and here we are in this process where people's livelihoods were at stake. Now, again, you know, we, we go back to this idea, 28,000 Disney cast members have been laid off by Disney. Again, it's their decision to lay off the cast members, but on top of it, it was exacerbated. Josh DeMauro, words, uh, the chairman of Parks, he said exacerbated by the state of California not giving that reopening information because how can you plan you know for the future if you don't know what your future is going to be like right. yeah, if you have no true. idea as to what you can do moving forward how are you going to plan for it yeah you know? and one of the rumors that I've heard is that uh, the state wants it to be like a geographical thing like yeah so that, that too. so that people that are you know further away say like San Francisco or whatever like won't be able to go to Disneyland mm -hmm. like uh, I don't know how true that is, but that's one of the things that I've heard that they're very much against. And, you know, I, I understand that uh, if you can't have people coming from, you know, more than a certain mi mileage away, is it even worth it to open? Exactly. I, I don't know. Uh, so for any you know. pass holder as it is right. <laughs> <laughs> for like all those people that go on the Friday nights, they have mm -hmm. nothing else to do. Might as well go hang out or whatever, but you know, they need, they need it within like a couple, like you know, like a little tri-state area kind of thing, you know, right. like having a little bit of, you know, Oregon, California, because I get it. They don't want a lot of people flying in. They don't want a lot of like contamination, like spreading, because like California could barely handle getting down the coronavirus right now. So I get it. But at the same time, it's just like you're you're ruining a lot of people's livelihoods yeah. here. So either give them the guidelines, let them figure it out. You guys hash it out back and forth since June. And we could have already been like somewhere in like an opening stage, but. Mm -hmm. Well, I think about what Tyler said earlier today, and that is at least give them a chance. Yeah. You know, if things don't pan out, okay, then let's revisit it and pull back and do whatever we need to do. But at least give them the opportunity. They've done it to restaurants. They've done it to salons. They've done it to malls. Like, yeah. you know, and I feel like they could have at least, you know, given some kind of guidance to, to the theme parks to like at least open like half capacity, quarter capacity, see how it goes, and then slowly add on. 
but I don't know. Then well, we have to wait. Looking forward to the guidance here very soon. Hopefully, um, theme park heads can agree on that, come together, and uh, make sure that it is all executed correctly um, and that it is something everyone feels comfortable with moving forward for the sake of uh, the lost jobs, for the sake of the people that are worried about coming back to their uh, career spots. We hope that we will see some uh, drastic measures taken very soon to correct this. To all who come to this happy place, welcome.